shoulder of Jesus. I, th I think about that. I think about he was the one whom Jesus loved. Can you say that this morning? That you are the same. You are the one whom Jesus loves. Yes. Yeah. You can walk around saying, I'm the one whom Jesus loves. I'm the one. Because he does. Hey, we have a special treat this morning for you. We have Al Isham. Come on up here, Al. Al's been with us for a while. And uh, I have a little battery. I'll change that out in a minute. And so um, Al's been in ministry. Um, before and God has him in ministry and um, Al's going to share about five minutes of his testimony and uh, would you welcome him this morning. Which mic? I don't know about y'all but I definitely felt the overwhelming of God's love this morning. Amen. 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 Um, I'm just going to give a brief testament about um, what I've been going through the past couple of years and um, what uh, the meaning of God's love really means to me. Uh, I tell people all the time, I don't know if y'all know the story of the prodigal son, um, but I tell everybody that um, I am the prodigal son because I've wandered away so far from um, the love of God and from the teachings of God. And, um, I came a long way and um, you know, I do believe that I can't avoid it anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, the story of uh, the prodigal son is in uh, uh, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. If anybody um, needs a recap on that, it's there uh, for you. Um, I'm not going to go into depth of it, but I will tell you all the moral that I got out of that, and that, um, that you can always um, find uh, hope in restoration. And I've definitely yes. found that um, this past few years. Um, 2016, I graduated from high school. Um, it was the peak of my life. I graduated with honors, top of my class. Um, got a full ride to college. Was blessed enough to have that, and um, I was, you know, hanging out with my friends, doing what normal teenagers do. Um, at the time, I didn't know that was going to be my last Christmas with my stepfather. Um, I didn't know that was going to be the last, um, you know year I ever had with them. And, um, my life totally did change in 2017. Um, this is actually the Bible he did give me. <laughs> now I'm just realizing that um, this was one of the last gifts he gave me. But um, in July, 2nd, July the 2nd, um, 2017, we were getting ready for uh, the 4th of July. And um, all my family was coming over. It was a Sunday. I do remember that because I just left church when I got the news. And um, we were all getting ready to celebrate the 4th of July together. And um, my dad, my stepdad, I got up early that morning because I, uh, at the time I was a financial advisor and youth pastor for my church. And um, I got up really early because I had to deal with some um, budgeting and um, finance at the church. And um, I got up early and I could smell cooking from my room. He was a great cook and he was getting ready to, um, he was getting the meal prepared for that day. And, um, I, I could smell it and went in there, I was like, ooh, it smells good, I wish I was um, gonna stay. And um, I went to church that day and I uh, came back and um, I didn't know what was going on. Uh, uh, I knew something when I left that morning. I, I don't know if it was my gut instincts or what, but I knew something bad was about to go on. And I felt the need to go to church though. And um, I came home and saw a med flight landing down in um, my field at the back of my house. And um, I saw all these cars parked everywhere and um, the police officers were showing up um, and the first responders were getting there as soon as I was getting there. And I pulled up and um, my brother was like froze and um, my mom didn't know what was going on. Uh, she, she was trying to find my stepdad and um, I was 
I was just like stuck in awe of what the situation was going uh, was was leading me to. And uh, I walked in. I saw my stepdad uh, laying in the kitchen floor bleeding out, and um, he was shot uh, accidentally shot by my cousin. Um, my cousin was showing him a gun, and um, it went off, got caught to his belt loop, and shot him in the neck. And um, at the time, my his brother-in-law, um, his brother was a paramedic, and he was trying to do the best he could, and I was trying to do the best I could when I got there. And, because um, I was an EMT in training at the time, and um, nobody else really knew what to do, so they tried to stay as far back as they could, and um, we were able to save him until the uh, next day, and uh, <coughs> um, he passed away uh, July the 3rd uh, in 2017, and um, he, he passed away an hour after my sister got there, so my sister was able to say his goodbyes too. But um, I knew at that moment I was just like, um, I knew what I was training for, and I knew that he might have not made it, and he was going to be a vegetable if he did, and uh, I knew he wouldn't want to live like that, so I, I, I told my mom, I'm like, we need to do the right decision, and we need to make the right decision, and um, do what we have to in the next coming few days, and um, I was there by my mom's side um, during the funeral, and I gave a good uh, brief testament about my stepfather because of how much he meant to me. Um, I never really had, um, growing up, a father idol in my life. Um, my biological father um, left us when we were about three years old. Um, I was very little when he left, and um, I always said my stepfather was um, our fourth birthday present because my mom started talking to him uh, two days before our fourth birthday. And um, they got married uh, a year after that. And um, he's always shown me what a father should be like. He's um, always been there. Um, he's always um, been that person I could give to for advice and um, never thought, um, honestly, I thought he was gonna outlet me. <laughs> but. Uh, Never thought uh, he'd die so soon and so sudden. Um, that also that week I lost my best friend to cancer um, from high school and I lost my dog as well. So I kind of went down a very um, distinctive path and um, blamed it mainly on God and um, lost my faith along the way and um, didn't go to church anymore. I, kind of jumbled away from church, kind of avoided my friends and family that went to church, and um, just in all, just like, hated, I don't want to say that word, um, but kind of hated God for what he did, um, and uh, I didn't see the point on honestly going to church if I didn't feel, you know, like I was going to get anything out of the message or get anything from it. Um, I also started uh, not really taking really good care of myself. I was working three jobs um, and going to school full time, and um, I led, led to kind of like emotionally eating. Um, got to the point where I was weighing about 320 pounds, and uh, my health kind of started going downhill from there. And um, I started having really bad sleep apnea where I couldn't breathe um, at night. My uh, my fiance at the time and my mom was kind of concerned about me because um, I would lose breath breathing when I was sleeping and so it, it, um, it lasted like three or four minutes and um, they, they were very concerned and said I needed to get help and um, so I finally told myself back last year um, that I needed to make a change when I had a stroke. I had a minor stroke and ended up in the hospital for over a week, and um, that was kind of the breaking point for me. I was like, I need to change, something needs to happen, and I started working towards getting my health back and um, getting, you know, um, building myself up uh, mentally, um, emotionally, uh, spiritually, and um, getting to where I needed to be to benefit myself, um, not just other people, because um, I've always been that person that gave the shirt off my back never asked twice and um, I really needed to focus on myself that year so in 2019 I fully committed to 
get my health back. I um, went to the gym, started getting uh, this diet that's really helped me, and lost over 120 um, pounds on this diet. Um, I came a long way um, spiritually as well. I got back into church, um, came back to church, and um, started really focusing on the messages and the verses and the Bible and going in depth more on um, the understandings of God's teaching and um, really um, learning more about uh, faith in general and um, my faith included. And uh, also uh, uh, started connecting more with friends and family that I've disconnected from in the past due to the fact that I was not in a good place and um, so uh, I did do that. And um, in 2019, I also separated from my fiance, but I knew it was kind of the best route for us to go because um, we both weren't in a great place at the time. And we needed to both work on ourselves. And um, so I felt like that was the right decision for us. And um, but, uh, Overall, 2019 was a good year for me, and 2020 has been a good year so far. And, um, the vision for 2020, I'm mainly working towards trying to better myself more and um, being there for my family and friends and um, being there for my community as well. Um, I did want to say that um, one of the last conversations I did have with my dad was I did tell him I was bisexual. And he, he included me. He, um, I always thought he would kind of be the person that shut me out after that, and um, not what he did. I was shocked, and um, I was in the car with him. I remember that day very well. It was two weeks before he passed away, and I was in the car with him driving to the east. And, um, I was kind of in tears because I didn't know how to tell him um, that I was questioning my sexuality, and I was kind of wandering down that path. and. Um, I asked him, I was like, um, so would you still love me if I was uh, uh, dating a man? And he looked at me stoned, shock-faced and all, and he, he was like, that's a hard question, son, but um, I mean, I, I feel like I would love you regardless. I mean, you're my son, so um, that was kind of the last one of the last conversations I had with him. I'm kind of glad I had that conversation when I did. I didn't know that was one of the last conversations I would have, too. But um, he has been a really great father for me. Um, I've had, I've been blessed to have really great friends and family um, along this path um, and this journey um, to get to where I need to go. And um, the teachings has been really great and helping me get through a lot of things as well. Time to get this to marriage. Appreciate y'all letting me talk. Yes, thank you. Thank you.